Well, let's talk about this. I made up my mind or I wouldn't be in here. I'm sorry, Sam. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best TV shows of 2023 so far. Okay, so you are talking. No, I return to call. They want to, you know, talk about talking. For this list, we're looking at shows that have wrapped up their seasons prior to the end of June 2023. We're leaving off animated shows like Unicorn Warriors Eternal. What's your favorite show of 2023 so far? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Abbott Elementary Season 2. Airing the season's final 12 episodes earlier this year, Abbott Elementary didn't suffer a sophomore slump. Why is a man cooking ribs in my parking spot? What is happening? It's game day, baby. It's development week. Here's a development. You either got to park on the street or give me $50 for your spot. I'm making extra money for the school. So put out or back out. Every member of this fine-tuned ensemble continues to bring their A-game, with creator Quinta Brunson at the head of the class. Like the best workplace sitcoms, the writing derives relatable comedy from its setting. At the same time, the show has ventured beyond the classroom, which is where Janine and Gregory have come the closest to becoming more than work friends or just friends. For how long did you like me? Like, how, how long? Pretty much since the first day I got to Abbott. Really? Mm -hmm. Me too. Just as public schools can rise above charter schools, Abbott Elementary proves that network shows are not dead in the streaming era. Savor these episodes, though, because with the WGA strike underway, we'll likely have to wait longer than usual to reunite with our favorite teachers. I found this valentine in my mailbox, and it's from, quote, a secret admirer, Candy Hart, with my name on it. Is this from one of you guys? Number 9, Star Trek Picard Season 3. Fans often say that Star Trek The Next Generation had two rocky seasons before finding its voice in Season 3. I am looking forward to it. Because while you're running around setting up diplomatic security, I'm going to sip Saurian brandy and think about writing my memoir. You could argue that history repeated itself with Picard, but this series perhaps had an even more impressive turnaround. Season 1 was mixed at best, and Season 2 might be the most hated entity in all of Star Trek. Season 3 is something of a miracle, delivering a farewell worthy of Jean-Luc Picard's legacy. All that matters is that we are together once more. Because I need you. All of you. Not just Picard, but the rest of the Next Generation crew as well. With the return of several fan favorites, Season 3 was touching, rousing, and nostalgic in all the right ways. Starting weak but ending strong, we guess you could call this the bizarro Star Wars sequel trilogy. You know, well, I've come to believe that the stars have always been in my favor. Aww. Number 8, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel Season 5. Like any respectable comedian, Minge Maisel knows when to take a bow while simultaneously leaving the audience applauding for more. Please return your friend to the upright position. You have been a kind and forgiving audience. Don't forget to tip your waitress. She's saving up to send her kids to Pittsburgh. I'm Mrs. Maisel. Thank you and good night. With its last batch of episodes, Amy Sherman Palladino's creation delivers its strongest set since season one. Akin to another final season on this list, Mrs. Maisel makes impeccable use of a flash-forward structure exploring Midge's life after her big break. They act like they've never seen a Jewish mother before! Well, it's Israel, Mama. Helicopters suddenly appearing in the sky make people very nervous. Who's gonna invade a lettuce farm? Health-conscious anti-Semites who want a salad. While much of the show still takes place in the 60s, the real meat of the story is in the future, where Midge and Susie's friendship is on the rocks. A 25-year friendship gone bust. What happened? What happened, Mike, is that two people in show business tried to have a friendship. Rachel Brosnahan and Alex Borstein somehow managed to outdo themselves with two comedic powerhouse performances for the ages. The punchline is the most essential part of any joke, and Maisel thankfully nails it. Number 7, Shrinking Season 1. Bill Lawrence and Brett Goldstein of Ted Lasso team with Jason Segel for another Apple TV Plus series that's surprisingly therapeutic. We know the answer. Don't you ever want to just, just make them do it? Great idea. We just rob them of their autonomy, any chance they have to help themselves, right? And we become what? Psychological vigilantes? We suppose not that surprising, as shrinking is about therapy. 
Sometimes even therapists need therapy, as Siegel's Jimmy deals with the loss of his wife and a strained relationship with his daughter. This encourages Jimmy to get directly involved in the lives of his patients, delivering brutally honest advice with mixed results. Paul, I think I can help people if I just get my hands a little dirtier. Hey, be me for a second. Would you trust you? The answer is no. Well, you didn't let me be you. Even when Jimmy's actions backfire, shrinking always delivers the proper dosage of comedy and pathos. The supporting cast ranges from breakout talents like Jessica Williams to seasoned vets like Harrison Ford, who reminds us what an underappreciated comedic talent he is. You think it's safe for you to still be driving, you know, with the Parkinson's? I passed the mandatory motor skills test a few months ago. I'm just a shitty driver. From the first episode onward, shrinking just keeps growing on you. Number 6. Poker Face Season 1 in the spirit of Columbo, Poker Face isn't a whodunit, but rather a how catch 'em. Why do you listen to that stuff? Why do I listen to the news? Yeah, what's the point? You can't do anything about it. Every day you're mad about something you can't do anything about. You're just better off with music, don't you think? I'm doing something about it right now. Virtually every episode commences revealing how a murderer committed the crime, with the suspense revolving around how Natasha Leone's Charlie will bring them to justice. Whereas Columbo had a badge, Charlie is on the run and just can't seem to maintain a low profile. I'm sorry, what's your name? Charlie Kale. Your registration's in the glove box. Did you know that you're a person of interest in a bunch of deaths in Nevada? I'm sure the cops would love to talk to you. While the show follows a formula, creator Ryan Johnson keeps every episode fresh with a revolving door of A-list guest stars, unique settings, and rewarding twists. Leon is the glue that holds Poker Face together, crafting an instantly iconic TV gumshoe who places alongside Columbo, Jessica Fletcher, and Sherlock Holmes. We dare even say that Benoit Blanc may have competition as Johnson's sharpest sleuth. Could you do me a favor and just let me know what this undeniable evidence is? Doesn't matter. What? Doesn't matter, because I just got a confession. I haven't confessed to anything. Oh, no, not yours. Number 5. Yellow Jackets Season 2 When the Yellow Jackets soccer team crash-landed in Season 1, we knew that they would have to take extreme survival measures. In Season 2, the characters finally sink their teeth into the unthinkable. Right now, there is a version of you that knows exactly who you really are and what you really want. A primal, elemental self. The present-day events are equally engaging, with the grown Yellow Jackets confronting sins of the past, as well as newly committed ones. Just when you thought this vast ensemble couldn't get any more impressive, Elijah Wood pops up as a stranger who keeps us guessing. What's with the boat? Nautical life calls to me. Plus, I hate bureaucratic red tape. You never know when you might need to leave the country sans passport. Likewise, season two leaves you constantly wondering whether this show should be categorized as supernatural, psychological, or a mix of both. We're not sure where the story is going, but we are in it for the long winter. Um, remember when you asked if I told anyone about all the stuff that's going on? Promise you won't freak out. Sure. No. If you're not caught up, see why it's the buzziest mystery currently on TV. Number four, Beef Season One. It all starts with a bit of road rage. What? What? We won't tell you how Beef ends, but to say that things escalate quickly would be an understatement. Stephen Yun and Ali Wong play two deeply flawed human beings who can't let a little thing go, allowing it to snowball into a big thing. Although they come from different classes, both characters are losing control of their lives. There's always something. Yes, there's always something. You know, it's like you work so hard for so long just to provide for your family, right? Yeah, if not you, then who's gonna? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then at some point, you'd think you'd get to relax, but no. By getting the last word, both feel that they regain some of that control. As matters continue to spiral, though, control emerges as an illusion, and petty vengeance is all that remains. See something you like, baby bro? Go get it. You gotta take control, man. It's unclear what the future holds for Beef, but if creator Lee Sung Jin keeps this tragic comedy self-contained, we'd be more than satisfied. Number 3. Barry Season 4 After last season's cliffhanger, Barry set us up for a bleak final curtain.
Throughout the series, we've watched Barry take on numerous roles. A soldier, an assassin, an actor. In his last act, Barry dives into another role as he pursues a new life. No matter what mask Barry dons, though, he can't escape what he is. I need a, I need a dog catcher. <laughs> I, I don't know if I need to spell this out for you anymore than I already am, Hank. <laughs> but I need your help, like now. The same can be said about the other characters. Gene can't escape his thirst for the spotlight. Hank can't escape the violence that surrounds him, and Sally can't escape the cruel twists that life keeps throwing her way. It's Cousineau's method. Just because it was done to you does not mean you need to do it to us. Okay, uh, let's take a tight five. As tragic as all of these people are, Barry remains rooted in comedy, showing how both genres can be different sides of the same mask. Number two, The Last of Us season one. This HBO series is based on one of the most compelling stories in video games. Being such a cinematic game, we were skeptical if a series could truly bring anything new to the equation. So what's the deal with you anyway? You some kind of bigwig's daughter or something? Something like that. Fortunately, The Last of Us is a high point in what's been easily the best year ever for video game adaptations. The show does justice to the game's most iconic moments, with Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey turning in pitch-perfect performances as Joel and Ellie respectively. Well, how about that? Made it in five days. Easy days? I don't know what Tommy was so afraid of. Still time to find out. Still time to find out. The showrunners also expand upon the source material with more time dedicated to supporting characters like Bill and Frank. Can we just give Nick Offerman the Emmy already? It is a rare adaptation that manages to be faithful while standing on its own. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Schmigadoon Season 2. Out with the Rodgers and Hammerstein, in with the Fosse and Sondheim. Thank you! <laughs> thank you! Oh, we, oh. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen! Oh, you're too kind. No, really, thank you. Party Down Season 3. Party like it's 2009. Now it's a party down reunion. Um, just yes. what everyone's dying for. <laughs> oh, I just love this stuff. Reunions, get-togethers, catch-ups, do-agains. I love seeing people from the past. And seeing people from the past see other people from the past. Why? Ted Lasso season three. We still believe. All we need to win are the fellas in this room right now. And all you fellas need to do is believe it. Daisy Jones and the Six. The band is fictional, but the characters feel so real. Did you want to talk through the song first? Oh, or? I'm fine, unless you have something. No, I'm fine. Kind of, okay. The other two, season three. It's the most underrated comedy on TV. Maybe something crazy? You should absolutely, and then I'll go more subdued, because I don't want to draw any attention from you. This is your night. Okay, this is insane. Yeah. This is nice and subtle. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Succession season four. We'd like to apologize to every other drama that's aired in the past year because chances are you're gonna have to watch the Succession cast and crew pick up most of the Emmys. Can anyone blame the TV Academy? How are we looking? This is one that we feel can work across every vertical. No. No, that's... No. That's a no. That's a hard no. This is bound to go down as one of the finest final seasons of all time. Greed has always been at the forefront of succession, but season four is just as much about grief. I love you, but you are not serious people. In case you've somehow avoided spoilers, let's just say that the season throws a curveball early on. This twist brings out the most humanity we've seen in each member of the Roy family. At the end of the day, though, are humanity and family destined to live in capitalism's shadow? Already rich. Okay, well, on the offer, I think I am what I am what I am. Okay, Popeye, well, uh, we'll check in, take it back to the board, right? Hate to see this break down. Did you enjoy this video? 
check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.